your point of view. It was fun learning from Mike how to crossfade from one deck to another, but as more and more people packed themselves into the huge crowd, you started to feel nervous. Finally, as the room grew even more packed and full of energy, Mike's voice boomed out, You all came here to dance, right? Are you ready? The room roared back at him, thousands of arms pumping into the air. All right! Let's party! Mike matched their energy, pointing skyward with both hands as the laser light spun around him. The crowd screamed in ecstasy, a mass of people jumping up and down. You covered your cat ears, overwhelmed. This was all too much. You found yourself backing into the corner. Mike noted your behavior, but didn't think too much of it. Hey kid, I'll take over the DJing now. You can borrow some muffling headphones if it's too loud, okay? You nodded weakly. As Mike began jamming out, you kept your hands clamped over your sensitive ears. You'd sunk down into the corner of the stage, knees curled to your chest, squeezing your eyes shut. You remembered Aizawa's face, breaking through the times you'd gotten scared. Deep breaths, Eiko. Slow in, slow out. Like this. You breathed deeply. It helped. You focused on that. Hello, kid. The voice spoke from right next to you. Your eyes snapped open, breath catching in surprise. Bluish purple eyes gazed back calmly from a man's face as he crouched next to you. He wore a dark gray hoodie. Aizawa's point of view. Taro Teshima was giving the law enforcement the chase of the year. Aizawa still hadn't gotten a visual on him. A visual was all he would need to stop Teshima in his tracks. But Teshima seemed to have anticipated that Tsukauchi might call for Aizawa's help and was avoiding him. The brand new pro Ingenium had succeeded the most so far. He couldn't match Teshima's speed, but he still moved fast enough to keep cutting off escape routes with the help of his sidekicks. Well, Aizawa thought, if Teshima wanted to avoid him, then he'd go where Teshima didn't expect him. He'd leave Tsukachi's forces and position himself along where he would run from Ingenium. It didn't take long to get into position, using his capture scarf to swing between buildings. He rolled and landed in a crouch on a lower roof. The shouts of Ingenium's sidekicks drifted from down the block. There. A blur of speed and dust shot down the street. Like a rooftop sniper, Aizawa's eyes flashed red. The man materialized stumblingly from the blur. He had an unkept, stubbly face and wore his green prison jumpsuit. He whirled, trying to spot Aizawa's location. His eyes widened as Aizawa crashed into him feet first. The double-footed kick sent him flying into the wall on the side of the alley. Before he could do more than attempt to sit up, Aizawa was there, lifting him and smashing his knee into his stomach, giving him no time to breathe before slamming him into the wall by his neck and smashing his other fist into his face. Teshima grunted in pain. Aizawa's fingers tightened around his throat. Aizawa hadn't been allowed to cause injury to Teshima, during the police investigations. But for the next minute, Teshima was all his. Teshima glared back at him with fear and hatred. It was a mutual hatred. This was the man who'd hurt Eiko. The very thought made him see red. But Aizawa focused. He couldn't pass up this opportunity to get answers. Who helped you escape? The hatred in Teshima's eyes brightened and Oddly enough, his eyes flicked to his watch. You're too late, he sneered. They said that if I kept you on the chase this long, they'd keep their end of the deal. Dread shot through Aizawa, and Teshima gasped as Aizawa's crushing grip constricted his windpipe. Who are they? Aizawa demanded. Teshima stared back sullenly under Aizawa's scorching glare. One of Ingenium's sidekicks appeared next to the alleyway, followed by several more. They took over, handcuffing Teshima and leading him away, shouting into their earpieces as they went. Eraserhead caught him! We have them contained! Aizawa's eyes widened from his glare. The objective had never been for Teshima to escape, only for him to keep Aizawa on a chase. 
That meant Aizawa ran. Your point of view. I'm Mike's friend. The man in the hoodie introduced himself. I can see that you're not used to crowds. I can give you a tour of this place, where it's a bit less loud. You stared back hesitantly. It was hard to think, or get a sense of him, with all the loudness of the room. I... I need to stay next to Uncle Mike. He smiled slightly. It's fine. Mike and I go way back. He offered his hand to help you stand. You accepted his aid automatically, but still hesitated to follow him. Suddenly, Mike appeared next to the man, frowning. He'd left his DJ controls, and the music continued to blast on auto. He placed his hand on top of your head protectively. Who are you? He addressed the man. The man smiled lazily. As smooth as could be, he lifted Mike's sunglasses and smirked at him. It's me, Hizashi. Mike's hand loosened on your head for a moment, then felt normal again. Oh, you! His grin seemed a little different from usual. Could you take Eiko outside? She seems overwhelmed. Yes, the man replied, placing a hand on your shoulder and steering you towards the exit. You looked up at the man. His eyes looked distant and yet focused, as though multitasking. You twisted to look back over your shoulder at Mike. He was flicking the switches, turning on preset settings, still grinning, but with that different quality you'd noticed. The door cut off your view of him abruptly. Aizawa's point of view. Aizawa tried calling Mike on the phone he'd borrowed from Sakauchi. It went to his annoying voicemail. He called again, same result. Teshima's words replayed in his mind. If I kept the chase going this long. It had all been a distraction. He had to find Eiko. He ran, weaving between city streets. He'd left you safe at the house with Mike. And it wasn't far. Just as he was about to swing to the rooftops, a TV screen caught his eye through a cafe window. Mike. The screen showed present Mike, surrounded by mist and laser lights, hyping up a crowd. Mike. If looks could kill, a passerby noticed the expression on Aizawa's face and shuddered as they hurried past. Your point of view. The man walked faster, keeping his gaze straight ahead. How long is this tour? You asked uneasily. Until you get tired. He still had that distracted quality. He led you down a flight of stairs to the lower level, then navigated a couple turns in the hallways. Your unease grew. You wrenched out of his hand on your shoulder, backing away. I want to go back to Mike! His bluish-purple eyes gazed back with boredom. Now that his hand no longer held onto your shoulder, you realized that it felt tingly. You twisted to glance down at it. It was plastered with a metallic silver patch. You pulled it off and saw that the underside was prickly, like a cactus. You frowned. Your shoulder felt numb. Actually, thinking was becoming difficult. You felt really drowsy. Glaring at the man, you turned and sprinted away. He watched as you stumbled and collapsed into unconsciousness. With a lazy slowness, Katsumi walked over and retrieved you. Your head lolled back as he lifted you into his arms and strode away. Aizawa's point of view. Aizawa ran through the crowd, shoving aside anyone who blocked his way with their hyperactive dancing. He leapt lightly onto the stage, staring up at Mike, who was nodding to the music as he made adjustments to the sound and lighting. Mike, Aizawa growled, standing. His dangerously low voice still managed to carry. Where's Eiko? Mike turned to look at him. His grin seemed even wider than usual. Shoda, decided to join? I thought you didn't like parties. Mike's grin was too wide, his motions not energetic enough. Aizawa's eyes narrowed. He approached, eyeing the control panel, 
and Mike's dance and body language. Mike had mentioned that some of his students had shown temporary personality differences. Do you know what this dial does? Aizawa pointed to one on the far side of the panel that Mike had been ignoring. Mike grinned. What, you're interested in DJing now, Shoda? Aizawa glared. Answer the question. Mike waved at it dismissively. That one doesn't make much difference to the sound of things. Aizawa grabbed Mike's collar and slammed him backwards onto the control panel. What the heck, Shoda? Mike choked in shock. Aizawa glared at him. Mike makes a point of using reverb in every song. I don't know who you are, but you're not Mike. Music continued to blast. Mike's back had pushed up the volume. Aizawa leaned over him menacingly. What did you do to Eiko? Mike, or whoever he was, coughed, giving Aizawa an ironic smirk. You're half right, half wrong, Eraser. Mike's not calling the shots anymore. But this is still your friend's body. So whatever you do to me, you're doing to him. Aizawa's eyes narrowed into slits of anger. Security was coming, their shouts audible above the blasting music. Coming to pull him away from attacking the DJ. If you're assuming I'll hold back for Mike's sake, you're wrong. Where's Aiko? The mic controller smiled with boredom. You're too late, anyways. Security was climbing onto the stage. Aizawa wouldn't get any information from him. Time was up. Aizawa lifted Mike off the DJ controls by his collar and punched him hard in the face. Mike spun from the force of it and slumped unconscious back onto the control panel. Aizawa evaded the security guards and ran. No time for irrational delays. Finding you was the only thing that mattered. Katsumi's point of view. Katsumi Shinzo tried a few doors in the hallway, then brought you into the first room that wasn't locked. A bit of dusky blue light filtered through the dirty window near the ceiling, resting on your too pale face as he laid you on the floor. He leaned back on his heels and removed the small box from the large pocket of his hoodie. A silver needled syringe rested in the soft black padding within. Gripping your arm to steady it, he inserted the needle into the artery of your inner elbow and slowly pressed the plunger, injecting the clear fluid until it was empty. Your muscles began to spasm as your body reacted to the drug. Your head whipped to face away, then towards him, tossing your hair with the suddenness of your motions. Your eyes remained closed. He looked down at you. His eyes gleamed with contempt as he leaned back on his heels. Personally, I don't see it. Whatever he sees in you. But I think he knows something that he won't admit to me. The sound of running footsteps in the distance cued him to leave. Mission completed. He'd administered the last primer, and in seven years, you'd be on schedule for the real thing. His bluish-purple eyes gleamed as he ghosted away. Aizawa skidded to a stop a minute later. The light of the hallway silhouetted him as he spotted you on the floor. He ran to you, taking in the sight with a pounding heart. By this time, the drug side effects had reached full force. You spasmed and thrashed, eyes closed, dark hair whipping as your head tossed and turned. Aizawa went into first responder mode. He knew better than to move someone who was having a seizure. He cleared away anything in your reach so that you couldn't accidentally kick or hit something. The next step was to slip something soft under your head so you didn't bang it against the floor. He glanced around. There was nothing. He knelt by your head, then slipped his own hands underneath, palms up. He stayed like that taking the force of your violent head jerks onto his open hands so that you didn't slam your head against the floor. Eventually, your movement slowed. Your body went limp. Aizawa checked your vitals. Your pulse felt fast. Your breathing seemed shaky. He gathered your limp body into his arms, laying your head on his shoulder. You felt as weak as a rag doll. 
Mike appeared in the doorway, breathing hard. Shoda, is she okay? His voice trembled. Aizawa didn't even look at him. He strode past Mike without a word. Mike watched him go. His eye was turning purple from Aizawa's punch, but the look of defeat shadowing his face went a lot deeper. Your point of view. You felt tired. So tired. Time passed dreamlessly. A light caught your attention. You opened your eyes and saw Aizawa leaning over you, surrounded by the light of day, glaring in concern. He opened his mouth to speak, but you didn't hear what he said because he lost consciousness again. The next time you woke up, night had fallen. Your heart raced. You looked around cautiously and immediately felt better when you noticed a familiar figure cocooned in a yellow sleeping bag on the hospital room floor. You sat up. Aizawa's breath caught. The sound had woken him. He rubbed his eyes blearily, then froze when he saw you awake. Hi, Dad. You grinned. He zipped off his sleeping bag and came over to you, holding your shoulders as he looked you over. Take it slow, problem child. You were out for a while. You shrugged, the movement difficult with his hands gripping your upper arms. I feel fine. I don't want to just sit in bed. Aizawa stared at you, his grip getting tighter. Dad? Uh, your grip is getting kind of tight. He started in surprise, then relaxed his hold. Sorry, Eiko. He released your shoulders. Then, without warning, he pulled you against him in a forceful hug. Dad? You looked up at him in shock. He usually only hugged you when comforting you, and it had always been gentle. You have a tendency of getting yourself into trouble, problem child. You couldn't see his expression, since your face was squashed against his shoulder. But your superhuman hearing could detect his shaky breathing. You squirmed your arms free, then returned the hug more gently. And he seemed to relax. He stepped back. Listen, kid. I know you want to be up and doing things, since you feel fine. But you should take it easy to be on the safe side. I already let the school know that you'll be taking the week off. He smirked at the memory. Principal Fujimori seems to have become an extremely compliant person. You smirked back. Okay, I'll rest until morning, I guess. You snuggled back into the hospital bed, but you couldn't seem to get comfortable. Azawa watched you with an ironic expression. What's wrong? Well, you felt stupid saying it, but you couldn't help it. You hesitated. I miss my sleeping bag from home. Aizawa took that in with a deadpan expression, then lowered his chin into his scarf and turned away. Was he hiding a chuckle? He walked over to his yellow sleeping bag and picked it up. You can use mine tonight. Well, okay. He brought it over to your bed, zipping it around you once you climbed in. You sighed contentedly. It felt so much more snugly than the hospital blankets. Thanks, Dad. You sighed sleepily. Aizawa nodded neutrally. He sat down in the window ledge and turned his head towards the moonlit cityscape. You knew he wouldn't leave. When you woke again, it was late morning, and sunlight streamed in brightly. Aizawa still slouched in the window ledge with one foot up, and the other sprawled onto the floor. Fast asleep. The TV was on, with the volume turned way down. But that was no problem with your superhuman hearing. You recognized the crowded room and misted laser lights on the screen. Hey, you thought. That's Mike's show from last night. Sure enough. The reporter was saying, Ravers from all over the world were excited for this annual EDM festival. But nobody saw this coming. The camera switched to a view of Mike jamming out on a DJ control panel. Well-known radio host, pro hero, and DJ, President Mike was attacked last night while on stage. The video footage switched to Aizawa, shoving Mike down against his control panel before lifting him 
and sending him spinning and falling back onto the controls with a punch fast enough to make a pro boxer jealous. This video clip is going viral, the reporter exclaimed, as the punch that sent Mike spinning and slumping down played and replayed on a continuous loop in the background. They seem to have exchanged words before this, and we're wondering, what's the story here? But for once in his history as a socialite, present Mike is declining to comment. The camera view switched to Mike, looking more subdued than Aiko had ever seen him, pushing the camera aside with his hand as he turned and walked away. Dad! Aizawa woke, lifting his head slowly from his chest and turning tiredly to glance at you. Dad, you punched Uncle Mike? You exclaimed, appalled. Well, hello, hello. It is Anya K once again. I hate to leave Mike in the spot he's in at the end of this story part, but we'll see how that works out in the next part, part 10. Also in part 10, Sukauchi, Aizawa, and Mike are all going to figure out more about what exactly happened. And of course, there's going to be other stuff, but I won't spoil everything. Get enough rest, drink enough water, take care of yourself, and have a great week, and I will see you next week. Bye! Thank you.